Good day everyone, it's NQ Explorers. Uh, today I'm up in the Palmer River gold field on the fringes of it. This creek here is a known source of fine gold, not so much nuggety gold but fine gold. So what I've done here, I've taken a, a sample of about 25 kilos from behind this rock bar. You can see these, uh, there's a this slaty rock bar that runs through the creek here like a natural riffle. So uh, we've just had a big, well we had a big wet season last summer. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, there'll be a lot of fine gold deposited on the downstream side of this rock bar. So what I'll do now, I'll take this sample home and uh, I'll put it through the rocker box. And uh, on the clean up, hopefully we'll get some nice little pickers. So anyway, this is the salt we got it from. It's on the Palmer River. Okay, back shortly. Okay, we're back home in the uh, backyard now. This is a little rocker box I built uh, about five or six years ago. I actually got the plans off uh, the internet. It was an 1870s rocker box. It was four feet long. And I built it to half scale. This is only two feet long. Um, build quality, it's uh, dodgy. That's a little feed hopper. And in that I got, uh, that's a six mil galvanized mesh. We call it snake wire out here. Um, so anything sub six mil will fall through that. We did have a bigger hopper, but that fell apart with use. And I've got a couple of aluminum slides here so that when you rock it, it agitates the hopper and the gravel falls through. And then the next process, it comes onto this sloping screen. That's got some of that outdoor carpet screwed onto it and more six mil snake wire. So that'll catch any coarser gold that runs towards the back of the box. Once it hits the back of the box, there's a little baffle there and then it comes forward down this piece of carpet here. This is the, uh, where, you, where you're using your main cleanup. Um, it's just another piece of outboard cut, but cut the size of the, um, the base of the box. And when, when you're finished, you pull it out and you wash it in the bucket and you get your gold out of that. And the final cleanup we're doing the little pans. Um, it's a lot quicker than panning. So here's the process. I've just got a steady stream of water running through, wash the gravel, get some agitation going so the stuff's coming down. And then the water starts coming down that bottom sluice area and it should wash any gold in the gravel through there. And this uh, stuff on the top that's plus six mil, you just check to see if I've got any big pieces. If there's any pieces like that, it'll be pretty cool. But, uh, and then you just dump that to your, uh, your tailings pile. I mean, in the, out in the bush, it's a little, you can use it with two people actually. It's, it's, I sort of designed it for a one man operation so you can sort of take it out in the car and uh, prospect with it up and down the creeks if you want to find a good little spot you can sit there for a couple of hours and fool around with it. It's a bit of fun. Sometimes you come home with a little bit of colour and some pictures. And you see the stuff, the fine stuff getting washed down through that uh, bottom sluice now. And it should be catching any, uh, any of the, the gold. If there's any in this stuff. So we'll just keep washing it and working it. Like out in the bush we just use a bucket of water. That's the only problem of course you've got to have water. Uh, a lot of the country up here is dry and you have to dry blow in the um, in most of the year actually. You can see all those fines coming down through that bottom mat there now. They should be catching any uh, gold, gold particles on the mat and they're in the gravel and just wash over the top. Okay, we're underway now, you can see all that. No, the gravel's feeding down there beautifully now. I've steadied up my feet and uh, you can see it pretty much in suspension in the water there, running down the, uh, the sluice. You actually, if you don't get enough uh, angle on it, it won't run properly. And if you've got a too steep, well, you lose gold because the gravel will overload the riffles. It's just a matter of playing around with it till you get it right. Zoom in on it a bit there for you. See if you get a nice rhythm going here. You can see the big stuff migrating over the top of the ripple at the bottom. And I was leaving the fine, heavier sediments on the carpet. And the tailings piles building up. I've done about half the bucket so far, so um, we're getting near the end. As you can see in the rocker box there, we've got that lovely, uh, that fine, all the fine sands 
but the heavier stuff should be sit sitting up in those um, in those riffles in that outdoor carpet there. That's the fun part coming up, panning that out. And then you can see all the rest is just going to the tailings here, a bit of a tailings pile at the front. Um, and this here, well that's all the plus six mil that uh, didn't go through the hopper, so I'll just check that later in case there's a piece in there. And um, we'll just keep at it with this, and then we'll get to the wash up. Righto, she's working well. Okay, well here we are with the clean up. This is the plus six mil gravel. I'll just dump that in another bucket here and um, I'll check that later. We need this pan. Now, we'll take out this little upper hopper, which should pick up any coarser pieces. I just wash it in the bucket of water. Get all the uh, any gravel and pieces out, and then I'll just inspect that later to see there's nothing stuck in there. Okay, well I've got the <coughs> ripple mat out. Now this what I'll do is wash that in the bucket. And you see a lot of sand stuck underneath it actually. And I'll just hose that, make sure I get all the fines out of the bottom of the rocker box because that'll be the heavy stuff. Clean in the bush I just do this with a bucket of water. Just sort of swirl it around. And then this uh this filter. Because I've always uh i got confident I'll get everything. I've got a little uh, aluminium riffle at the bottom there, two of them, so I'll just wash them out. That'll catch the last bit that might have overloaded on the um, riffle carpet. So you know what I'll do? I'll uh, get the fines out of this bucket and pan them off, and uh, hopefully we'll have a bit of gold and uh, see how we go. Okay, here's my pan of heavy fines and fine sand that I got out of the uh, that gravel bucket. Now I had about 25 to 30 kilos of gravel and uh, this is what it came down to. Normally in the bush I'd just go out and just pan this off in the creek and see what's left but uh, I'll just do it in the bucket here and uh, see what we come up with. So that's I'm down to that. that that's uh, what's left of the 25 uh, to 30 kilograms of uh, sample. Righto, I'll go and start panning this stuff off. Well I just thought I might show you the anatomy of this little half scale rocker box I built uh, just here in the shed a bit better than I it was obvious on that uh, footage when I was cradling before oh, yeah it can be either called a cradle or a rocker box usually they call it a cradle I think I was called a rocker box but anyway the original um, I built this so it was portable you could conceivably carry it a fair distance from the car you know up a creek or something and, and work a bit of a gr a ground with it the original um, 1860s design just had that rounded uh, rocker underneath and I used to take a bit of plywood out and just rock it on the plywood that was okay but uh, it moved around too much and it drift off the plywood you'd end up 50 metres up the creek so then I built this this, this uh, frame that it sits on I just got a pin and a bracket and a hole in that piece there and uh, so it sits on this this base the, the rocker sits on the base and it sort of doesn't move around too much um, made it a lot easier to use. Like I said, it's sort of a bit of a work in progress. It keeps, uh, every time I use it, I think of some other, it'll end up that heavy, I won't be able to carry it. But anyway, this little hopper, that's a little feed hopper. I had a big, a much bigger one with uh, hungry boards on the side, but you can't really process that much gravel because it, um, it just takes too long to get it through the six mil screen. And you don't want to go to a larger screen because uh, you'll overload your carpet. And then you've got this, this piece here with the snake wire and it's angled to the back of the rocker box so it drops through that six mil screen onto this and this catches all the real coarse fragments of gold they won't go any further than that and once the, then it drops down that slot off that baffle and then it runs down as you saw with the water through the carpet and picks up all the fine gold this here was a bit of a uh, well I call it the panic bar because uh, I don't want to lose the, the last bit out of there in case, in case it gets overloaded that'll catch anything and you won't lose it into your tailings but anyway, that's sort of pretty much how it's built. And the, the bolt comes out of the handle, so you can fold the handle down and put it in the car. I mean, it's reasonably small, and uh, it's fairly portable. You just need this, a couple of buckets and a shovel, and a, a source of water. I mean, I've even taken jerry cans in, and you, and you can use water like that, but you've got to be able to recycle it somehow, ideally, because when the creek's dry, uh, wet cradling's just not an option. But anyway, there she is. Um, it was a good little... Uh, cost me nothing, it just built out of scrap, so, and it gets fine gold, so it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's, 
it's basically an advanced form of panning, but you can press it so much more material with this. You still got to get into your pan for your clean up, but uh, no, it's good. You can get a lot of material short in a day, and you can end up with quite a bit of fine gold out of it if you get the right spot in the creek. But uh, like I said, that just shows you. I, I, I spent probably 30 minutes in that creek digging that bar. Um, if I'd been a lot more energetic and, and, and chopped it up a bit more and got a bit deeper, there would have been a lot more gold there. So that just shows you how much fine gold comes down that creek. I mean, that was worked 150 years ago, and there's still gold coming down it now. So there you go. Anyway, um, I'll show you the cleaner. Okay, well, this just shows you how much uh, fine gold is actually in that creek. I didn't really try even very hard on that rock bar. I, I got a bit of the slate out and went to a fair depth, but um, I mean, if I, I really worked that uh, that bar and got uh, deep into that slate because it's pretty um, pretty soft stuff, and the gold's working its way down into that weathered slate in the creek bed, but. Uh, it was the ideal situation because the uh, the slate bedding was uh, at 90 degrees to the flow of the water, so it was just about a perfect natural riffle. But uh, anyway, well, I'll show you what I've got in the pan here now. Okay, well, here's the results of the cleanup. You can see there's uh, quite a bit of fine gold there and some nice little pieces. Uh, in amongst this black, there's a bit of black, heavy black sand in there with it, so um, I could pan it down a little bit further, but I'm not going to do. What, what, what I'll do now is just show you um, uh, this little Falcon uh, MD20 gold tracker that uh, Crampo sent me. Check out his channel, I'll subtitle his link. Got a great prospecting channel, and uh, I'll show you how sensitive this Falcon is on this tiny little flakes of gold here. But uh, I'll we'll just get it out now, and we'll, I'll be back to Okay, I've got the falcon here now. This is the largest piece you can see here. There it is picking up that piece. Now there's four or five little pieces in there. Really sensitive little detector. There's two little tiny pieces here. You can even get a whisper out of those. Definitely the big ones there, listen to that. There's still some of that sand that I could uh, pull out of there, but there you go, that's the falcon. So that was a result of um, about 25 to 30 kilos of gravel through the rocker box. Like I said, if you uh, put uh, a day's worth of uh, gravel through that little rocker box, you can imagine you're going to get quite a bit of a little uh, fine gold. So um, there you go, just thought I'd do a little bit of a demo over that little uh, half scale rocker box. And um, hope you enjoyed that video. Happy hunting and happy prospecting everybody. Thanks for watching.